Hey everybody, it's Mike with Inflatable Border, and today I'm reviewing the Bluefin Cruise Carbon All-Around Stand-Up Paddleboards. The Cruise Carbon is Bluefin's line of premium all-around paddleboards. They have an extra durable construction and also have a double air chamber system. The Cruise Carbon 10 foot 8 and Cruise Carbon 12 foot are actually significantly different in performance, even though their sizes and shapes are actually very close. Each board also comes as a complete package and includes several extra items as well. Bluefin uses a heavy duty construction for the Cruise Carbon paddle boards. Inside the boards, we have a knitted drop stitch core with a high density of space yarns giving it its six inch thickness. For the outside of the board, we have Bluefin's Exosurface Laminate Dual Layer Fusion PVC Shell. This material is again high density and meant to be highly durable, and the fusion process eliminates hand gluing between the layers of PVC, reducing some of the weight. The top and bottom layer are joined together by gluing on an interior layer of PVC around the rail, and then we have an outer rail layer as well. The Cruise Carbon paddle boards get their name from the carbon fiber rail reinforcement around the midsection of the board. This extra layer of carbon fiber fabric and PVC material provide even more durability and some additional rigidity for the board. The Cruise Carbon paddle boards also have a second air chamber for increased rigidity and enhanced safety. I use air quotes there because I'm not entirely sold on this concept of a second air chamber actually providing a safer paddle board. There are some benefits to it, but also several drawbacks, and it's a topic for a whole nother video. Bluefin has historically been known for their heavy duty durable SUPs that also happen to weigh quite a bit. We found that the Cruise Carbon 10.8 weighs 30 pounds, and the Cruise Carbon 12 weighs 33 pounds, putting both of these boards definitely on the higher end of the scale for paddleboard weights. One thing that's a little bit different for the Cruise Carbon line of premium paddleboards compared to other brands' premium inflatable paddleboards is that the Cruise Carbon series have a maximum inflation pressure of just 15 PSI. This is more or less a baseline for what we expect to see in any modern inflatable paddleboard. With this relatively low maximum pressure, but the addition of the second air chamber, the exosurface laminate, and the carbon fiber rail reinforcements, I really wasn't sure where this was going to land in our bin test. So with the Cruise Carbon 10.8 and 12 foot inflated to their maximum PSI, and with 170 pounds of weight in the standing area of the boards, we did measure 1.58 inches of bend in the Cruise Carbon 10 foot 8 inch, and 1.46 inches of bend in the Cruise Carbon 12 foot. This puts the Cruise Carbon right around the average mark against all of the boards that we've done in our bend test. For the weight of this board and for the addition of the second air chamber and the carbon fiber rail reinforcements, I'm a little disappointed with this bend test result, but really what's most important is how it feels on the water. Now, while I was standing on the Cruise Carbon and paddling normally, I didn't really notice any flex. When I started to paddle much harder for our sprinting portion of our speed test, I could feel the boards flexing when I was bouncing on the board though, I could make it flex quite a bit, and when it recovered, it had a little bit of a disjointed feel because of the two different air chambers. Overall, I think the Cruise Carbon is built well, and it is built to be a very durable board. However, it is on the heavy side, so that is something to consider if you're already moving the board around quite a bit, or if you're a smaller paddler, uh, or if you just want a board that's gonna feel a little bit lighter on the water as well. The Cruise Carbon actually comes in three different sizes. However, the 15 foot is a specialty tandem board, so we're not gonna be talking about that in our review today. The Cruise Carbon 10 foot eight is, not surprisingly, 10 feet eight inches long. It's 33 inches wide and six inches thick. It has a weight capacity of 330 pounds, and it weighs 30 pounds. Now, it is specified to be 82 centimeters wide, which is a hair over 32 inches, so it is about three quarters of an inch wider than what the paper specification indicates. The Bluefin Cruise Carbon 12 foot is, once again, 12 feet long, is 32 and a half inches wide and six inches thick. It has a maximum weight capacity of 390 pounds and weighs 33 pounds. Again, it is specified at that 82 centimeters, just over 32 inch mark. Uh, 32 and a half inches was within about a quarter inch difference though. So not a huge difference there between the specified and measured widths. The Cruise Carbon 10.8 and 12 foot have what I call a hybrid shape, where they do have a strong taper in the nose that starts just in front of the standing area, but the tail is kept very wide and square. 
This gives the board some kind of large sweeping outline curves along the side, but it's not super drastic, so you still get some parallelism in the standing area for better stability. While out on the water, I didn't feel any twitching or rolling on either of these boards, and they both felt very stable. Again, we have that super wide square tail and the not quite parallel midsection, so there is a good amount of volume there to help support you. I would definitely call both of these boards very beginner friendly in their stability, with the 10 foot 8 getting just a little bit more stable than the 12 foot, just because that extra half inch in width really does kind of help you when the board is flat. I felt they were very similar for me in stability because of the extra length of the 12 foot board. However, I could feel just a little bit of a difference there giving an edge to the 10 foot eight. Both boards have a high traction deck pad. If you look at it from a distance, you'll see that it has a diamond groove pattern, but if you get up close to it, you'll also see that it has a pebbled texture covering the entire deck pad. This gives it a lot of great traction, whether you're barefoot or wearing shoes. It is still fairly comfortable, but if you sit on it for a long time on bare skin, you might end up with a few texture marks. The deck pads are quite large, extending in width nearly rail to rail, and on the 10 foot 8, it covers about the rear two thirds of the board, and on the 12 foot, about three quarters of the board is covered with the deck pad. This gives you a lot of room to move around on the board to adjust for passengers or cargo, or if you do want to step all the way back to the tail of the board for a pivot turn, you have great traction the entire way, and the deck pad ends with a raised kick pad to prevent you from stepping off the back of the board and give you a little bit of extra support as you sink the tail and lift the nose. With almost the exact same width and very similar lengths, I was actually surprised at how different these two boards were in our speed test. The Cruise Carbon 10.8 had an average sustained sprinting speed of about 5.1 miles per hour, and I got a peak top speed of about 5.6 miles per hour. On the Cruise Carbon 12, I was able to paddle it at a sustained sprint at an average of about 5.4 miles per hour and hit a peak speed of 6.0 miles per hour. So a fairly significant difference between the two. When you are paddling at a more casual rate for a longer distance, these two boards still have a fairly significant difference between the two of them. The Cruise Carbon 10.8 averaged about 3.3 miles per hour, and the Cruise Carbon 12 averaged about 3.9 miles per hour during our cruising speed test at around 25 strokes per minute, which is a very casual pace that most people can maintain for several miles at a time. 3.3 miles per hour is a little bit slow compared to other all-around paddle boards. However, 3.9 miles per hour is fairly quick compared to other all-around paddle boards. At this casual cruising pace, I found that the Cruise Carbon 10.8 moved about 19 feet between strokes before it started to slow down, and the Cruise Carbon 12 would move about 21 and a half feet between strokes before it slowed down. That gives both of these boards a gliding ratio of about 1.8 board lengths. That is quite efficient for an all-around paddleboard, although it's not quite the level of efficiency that we see in a dedicated touring board. With the combined speed and efficiency of the Cruise Carbon 12 foot, I'd also be totally comfortable calling this an adventure touring board as opposed to just an all-around paddleboard. It seems to do quite a good job of moving longer distance fairly quickly and still has the ability to carry quite a bit of payload. Again, we do see a big difference between the maneuverability and tracking performance for each of these boards. In our maneuverability stress test, we do a standing 360 degree turn using forward sweep strokes only. We count the number of strokes, we do the test multiple times, and the Cruise Carbon 10.8 was able to complete the test in an average of about 6.8 strokes. On the other hand, the Cruise Carbon 12 foot didn't do so well and needed an average of about 14 strokes to make the same turn. Now this is a stress test, so there are much faster ways to turn your board. In doing the same test, but with a reverse sweep, we found the result to be much closer with the Cruise Carbon 10.8 needing four strokes to make the full circle and the Cruise Carbon 12 foot needing about four and a half strokes to make the full circle. Both boards responded well to steering input while paddling, and both of them were also fairly easy to turn in smaller increments up to about 90 degrees. It's just when you need to make very large maneuvers the Cruise Carbon 10.8 is definitely going to outperform the Cruise Carbon 12. Our tracking test is likewise set up as a stress test. We paddle towards a distant target and we take 10 paddle strokes on a single side 
and then measure the difference between our target course and our new course at the end of the 10th paddle stroke. In this case, the Bluefin Cruise Carbon did very well with an average course deviation of just 14 degrees. This puts it above average for our all-around paddle boards, but again, not quite to the level of a touring paddle board. The Cruise Carbon 10.8 didn't do quite as well with an average course deviation of about 21 degrees. Now, that is significantly less than the 12-foot Cruise Carbon, but it does put it right around the average for all-around paddle boards. Both of these boards have three fin boxes and come with three fins. So when we do our maneuverability and tracking testing, we do use the complete setup. Now by removing the two side fins, you can improve the maneuverability performance without drastically reducing your tracking. Or by removing the center fin and using just the two side fins, you can drastically improve your maneuverability, but you will see a large change in tracking performance. The center fin box uses a universal standard or US fin box, so you can actually easily swap that fin out for something completely different. If you do want even better tracking performance, you can get a larger touring style fin, or if you want a little bit more maneuverability, you can use a shorter fin. No matter which size cruise carbon you choose, both come with a very robust set of features built onto the boards. Each board has a medium-sized cargo area on both the nose and the tail of the board, and both of them are roughly the same size and stretch between four D-rings each. They both have removable bungee cords, and there are removable passenger handles as well. There are five threaded accessory mounts on both the Cruise Carbon 10.8 and Cruise Carbon 12, and each model also has four D-rings around the middle of the board that make it compatible with Bluefin's kayak seat. There are three padded carrying handles, one on the nose, one at the center of the board, and one at the tail of the board. And there are two additional carrying handles on either side of the middle of the board. Both the Cruise Carbon 10A and Cruise Carbon 12 come as a complete paddleboard kit, and you also get a few extra accessories with each of them. Included with each of these boards are three fins, a coiled leash, a maintenance and repair kit, a double chamber triple action hand pump, and a carbon fiber hybrid paddle. Additionally, you also get a shoulder carrying strap and a waterproof phone case. With the Bluefin Cruise Carbon 12, you not only get everything else that I've mentioned, but you also get a kayak seat and another blade for your paddle to turn it into a double bladed paddle. All of this comes packaged with the Bluefin wheeled carrying backpack. The bag is made with a heavy duty nylon material, it has a large main area to hold the board and large items. It has a large zipper pocket on the front as well for the leash, fins, and other smaller items. It does have both a padded backpack harness and wheels so you can move it around with ease. Now I have had a little bit of an issue with durability with these bags, with the zipper on one of them completely breaking and another one having issues with some of the smaller pieces breaking off. Part of that is that there's so much that comes with these boards that the bags aren't really big enough to hold everything. And when you have all these items in the bag together, it also makes for an extremely heavy kit. The Bluefin Cruise Carbon 12 with all of the included accessories comes in at 52 pounds altogether. That's a lot of paddleboard to move around. The three-piece drive carbon paddle that comes with the Bluefin Cruise Carbon 10.8 and Cruise Carbon 12 has a carbon fiber shaft and a carbon fiber handle section. The grip is made from a heavy-duty plastic with a rubberized texture, and it has a very secure feeling T-grip shape. The blade is made from a reinforced ABS plastic, and it has a slight scoop shape and very low rake angle. Altogether, this paddle is fairly heavy at 34 ounces, and it does feel very blade heavy in the hand. The handle section does not have any length markings, and it doesn't have any indexing to help you align the paddle blade and the handle together. So you do wanna make sure that your blade and your handle are properly aligned every time you adjust the length. The Bluefin Cruise Carbon 10.8 and Cruise Carbon 12 offer two very different paddling experiences, but both have beginner-friendly stability and both are available for a variety of different uses. The Cruise Carbon 12 foot is a little bit better suited for paddlers who want to travel farther or go a little bit faster or carry a little bit more cargo for an overnight trip or more regularly paddle with a passenger or pet. The Cruise Carbon 10.8 is gonna offer more maneuverability and agility. It still has great stability and can still be paddled with another passenger or pet, although you do wanna be a little bit more cognizant of the amount of space that you need. 
Both the Cruise Carbon 10.8 and the Cruise Carbon 12 come with a large set of accessories, including a few extra accessories you don't normally get. And the Cruise Carbon 12 does come with a complete kayak inversion kit. Bluefin also backs the Cruise Carbon 10.8 and 12 with their five-year warranty. This is a significantly longer warranty than what most paddle boards come with. Overall, the Bluefin Cruise Carbon 10.8 and Cruise Carbon 12 offer a great all-around paddling experience for paddlers of all sorts of sizes and uses. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I've answered all of your questions about the Bluefin Cruise Carbon 10.8 and Cruise Carbon 12, but if I did miss something or you have other questions, please leave a comment below. While you're down there, you can find links to the full written reviews for both of these boards, as well as for many, many other paddle boards. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of the latest video content we're producing. If you are thinking about purchasing the Bluefin Cruise Carbon 10 foot 8 or 12 foot, we'd appreciate it if you use the link in the video description below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does directly help support our channel and bring you more content like this, as well as other reviews and educational material. Thanks for watching, don't forget your PFD, and happy paddling!